I, uh, so I was researching the Japanese IME and the documentation is horrible and there's like no good sources of information online, right? Like I was looking at Reddit, I was looking this website, often you get recommended because it has some good advice, but there's like no review of the settings <laughs> and Microsoft makes it unbelievably difficult. Um, so I thought I'd just share what I know because maybe it'll help someone. Um, so first, uh, you got to go to the settings. You got to type in uh, keyboards, plural, right? That'll bring you to this page. Um, and here you have your keyboard. Um, this checkbox is kind of cursed. <laughs> Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, right? Like, so I have it set off so I can use um, the same input method for like globally, right? Um, but that's not necessarily the case, right? Okay, so here I'm gonna switch my input method. You saw that character A or down here shows I'm in hiragana mode, right? And then I go back to settings and it switches me back to the alphanumeric mode i guess because there's no typing in settings that like it can't be in hiragana mode i don't know but yeah so this checkbox only works some of the time um let's see uh language bar yeah sure um and then these two like i don't get the ui these two are the same uh they bring up the same window, but to a different tab. So I have it, the language bar docked just so that I can see the input mode. Um, like, yeah, I get that big notification, um, but I also like to be able to glance down. Um, yeah, what else? Um, I don't have any um, hotkeys for switching between input languages, that would be this, switching to English. Like alphanumeric mode is, you know, it works as an English keyboard. There's no, there's no reason to switch back to an English keyboard. Um, okay, so that's these settings. And this isn't <laughs> really anything. Um, most of the settings are here. You click on the Japanese keyboard or the Japanese language or whatever, click options, um, gives you some more stuff and, oh, there's more options here. Oh, I think these, yeah, okay. So then you gotta go to your IME and then you click options and then, okay, now we're in the real options. Um, and most of these don't matter, but in general, here's where the stuff that matters and here's like, a subset of the options, um, which you can look through, but I think they're all shown on advanced settings. So if you open that up, okay, here we go. You have input method, Romaji is, I think, the way to go. Um, you can set your punctuation. I use the like weird punctuation, or I guess maybe Japanese default punctuation. Um, just to remind me that, hey, I'm in the hiragana input mode or whatever. Um, I guess also, like, it's a reminder that, like, uh, these are, like, full width characters, right? If you accidentally type a full width period, it'll look the same as a half width or, like, alphanumeric period. Um but it'll, it'll look strange, like the spacing on it will look strange because it's full width and not half width. Um, and um, yep, I set space and numeric pad to be always half width. For some reason, you can't change the default number keys to be always half width. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's just a annoyance that you have to live with. Um, at least with the Microsoft IME, maybe Google's is better. I haven't tried it. Um, uh, these three, again, they do this weird thing where it's like it's the same menu that it'll bring up, but to a different tab. 
Um, this is sort of the big one. It lets you look at all the hotkeys. Um, and boy, do they really not care about user experience. So this window, you can't resize it. <laughs> And the tabs are too small to even read what the headings are. So you got to like manually stretch these out. Okay, okay. This and then the other two I don't think matter. It has to do with like part of speech boundaries. Um, yeah, okay, so the big ones. Here we go. Um, you can change what hotkeys you want. So here's the key. Here is when you're just looking at text, like there isn't any input. Um, here I think is when you've typed something out and you get that uh, dotted underline, um, which for example, looks like, here we'll use G shell. Uh, yeah, and then like, yeah. Oh, okay, so I guess it's a single underline, right? So I think that's this mode when we've just typed something. Um, converted will be if you convert it by hitting spacebar. Um, that's this. You get this thicker underline. It says, hey, we've converted the character. Um, candidate list is if you hit spacebar twice. Um, and it shows these numbers to select which one you want. You can hit tab from here to expand it to big list um, and those numbers follow you, right? Um, and the candidate list, even though it looks similar, uh, is actually different from the prediction, which is if you hit tab, it brings up like a prediction list. I don't know why these are different, um, but yeah, you gotta pay attention. Uh, to which you're using. I guess I generally use spacebar, but um, in theory, like once you know what you're doing in Japanese, hitting tab might be faster because um, it'll just predict instead of, I don't know, who knows. Um, yeah, so most of these I'm doing the same as the default, but there are a couple things I changed. Number one is... Um, F6 is hiragana, F7 is katakana. I switched F8 to be alphanumeric or half-width alphanumeric. Um, and F10 is half-width. So I switched F8 and F10. Um, really the only difference is like if I type in ie, right? Hiragana, that's F6. F7 is katakana. And then um, F8 goes to... Um, alphanumeric, but if you're in hiragana or katakana and you hit the half width key, it'll bring up half width katakana, which is like almost never used. Apparently it's used for like banks and stuff. Um, in Japan, it's like receipts. I don't know. We, we wouldn't ever use it. Um, but, um, yeah, so so I think having like a distinct, um, like having F7, F8, F6, F7, and F8 together as like the three modes um, is nice. And you can never find yourself in a situation where you accidentally hit the half with katakana. Um, yeah, uh, something I did discover, which is pretty cool, is um, pressing the half width alphanumeric key, normally F10, my hotkey is F8, uh, switches between lowercase, uppercase, and uh, I guess Pascal case, right? First letter is capitalized. Um, what else did I change? I changed one other one. Oh, um, shift spacebar. Um, we don't have a reconvert key like, where is it here? It's this key, which is like some key on a Japanese keyboard, but we don't have it. So there's no way to reconvert anything. You have to delete it and retype it with the Microsoft IME. Um, so I added uh, shift space, wasn't doing anything useful. So if you type EA and you, boom, it's a house. Um, and then you go on typing other stuff, right? Um, 
and then you want to come back and reconvert this shift space will bring up that that menu again um, rather than having to delete it and retype it so that's pretty useful um, I think that's it I think that's the only things I changed um, you could also set colors um, and like they have pre-built ones um, so you can see what that would look like uh, default works fine for me um, and then this is also a pretty useful one uh, lists all the uh, Romaji conversions to characters um, and you know there's a, there's a couple tricky ones um, but uh, may maybe it's useful to I don't know print these out and tape them on your computer while you're still learning or whatever but sometimes you want to look it up and it can be hard to look up so here's the place to look it up um, what else okay conversion yeah I only do hiragana and full width katakana uh, there's no reason to convert to Romaji or half with Katakana in the candidate list. Um, you can select candidates using the numbers on the keyboard, um, which I showed. Uh, character comments. This is pretty cool. I don't speak Japanese well or read Japanese well enough to... Um, uh, use this feature yet but when you see a little book it shows you a little dictionary pop-up maybe that's useful who knows um, but could be I think it's kind of cool um, what else oh so the there's this setting which I think is default to off uh, normally um, if you hold down shift and you start typing you can type out in alphanumeric. Um, but you can also uh, have that third checkbox, this guy here. Um, when you hit shift, it'll switch to alphanumeric. Um, that way, oops, okay, yeah. So you can see I'm, I'm typing out hiragana. I tap shift, and then I can type out alphanumeric. Um, I think it stays like that. Oh, no. Until you hit delete, I guess. Um, test. House. Yeah, okay. So it'll stay like that until you start deleting stuff. Um, what else? Uh, predictive input. I always had this off, but I thought I'd turn it on and see what it does. Um, but I don't use input history because I'm probably going to be typing gibberish until I know what I'm doing. Um, oh, I also did change these. Um, so Katakana is always full width. Um, and yeah, like numbers and alphabet symbols, always half width. Uh, don't know if that did anything, because yeah, when you type out numbers, it's still full width, and you'll have to convert it to half width. Um, but... I don't know. I guess it makes me feel better that the settings at least reflect what I want, even if it doesn't do it. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, that's, you know, you can explore this on your own, but it's sometimes hard to find. Um, now you know how to find it. Uh, also, I used the previous version. I know there's like a newer version of the Microsoft IME. It was like, I think doing something weird with the UI where like it wouldn't show the input mode or it was doing something different and uh, turning this on fixed it for me um, just because I had gotten used to the old IME. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks. Bye.